This warning goes out in response to what happened last weekend. So many Southern Nevadans came out to see the snow that the roads became dangerously overcrowded. So now law enforcement is bracing for round two. Are you going on your butt or on your belly? Christine said Wiedis knows she chose wisely. I feel like we have Mount Charleston all to ourselves. Whoa. Squeezing in a little snow play in Kyle Canyon before another busy weekend. Something she's learned to avoid. And it gets really crazy. Even last year, um, we came a few times and we were like, wow. I mean, people park on both sides. It does get hectic. Hectic and dangerous if emergency vehicles can't get through. With just a few thousand parking spots on the mountain, it fills up quickly. It becomes a hazard when people literally start trying to park in the travel lanes. NHP trooper Travis Smacka says weekend visitors should expect possible closures. His department even sending out alerts on social media. Is if you have any kind of reservation at the hotel or the resort at the top, if you have room reservations or if you're a resident of the mountain, please let the officer or trooper at the road closure know that and then you will be able to go through. The influx of visitors to the mountain last weekend was like I have not seen in 16 years up here. It was just crazy. Thomas Schnethcloth is general manager of the Mount Charleston Resort, who's now using a program to text guests when their reservation is ready, and they can text back. And when the front parking lot looked like this last weekend, some guests did have issues. People had good courtesy where they were texting us saying, too much traffic, I'm turning around. So we were able to go outside and grab a few people out there that didn't have reservations. His advice, always call ahead. As for the Zedwitas family, Yes. It's all about finding that perfect spot and some unusual solitude in Kyle Canyon. It's beautiful. They're having a blast. Denise Rosh, News 3. Well, those eligible here in Nevada are given Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, both boasting over 90% efficacy rates. But doctors say the logistical challenges of administering two doses can be difficult with the rollout process. So now a few new alternatives might be available to more Americans in the next few weeks. As the world races to vaccinate as many people as possible, new vaccine options may be around the corner, starting with Johnson & Johnson, which may receive emergency use authorization in a matter of weeks. The company says its vaccine is 66% effective with preventing symptomatic disease and 85% effective against preventing severe illness. That's lower than competitors Moderna and Pfizer, but doctors argue it still has several advantages. Using viral vector technology instead of mRNA, it doesn't need ultra-cold storage. That makes it easier to transport. Then the biggest advantage, argues Dr. Manis Mandel with Roseman University. Johnson Johnson formulation did the clinical trial where they demonstrated that with one shot, it generates a very good immune responses. Dr. Dahlia Walks is a local family physician who's heard patients inquire about new vaccine options on the horizon. Johnson Johnson's gonna be huge, this is gonna be good. But others could be on the way too. Right now, AstraZeneca is approved and being administered in Europe. Several countries have given the green light to Russia's Sputnik V vaccine, and Novavax from the U.S. is also in its final stages, to name a few. The more the merrier, say doctors, as contagious variants continue to spread around the globe. Having more come around the bed allows us to uh, prepare for variants and prepare for population differences. And more vaccine choices could also get Nevada and the world on track to a normal life sooner. I think we are going to see a speed up of vaccination and we're going to have a good amount of our population vaccinated, hopefully by the summer. For five children in Tampa, Super Bowl week may have saved their lives. That is how many were rescued from human trafficking by volunteers with soap or saving our adolescents from prostitution. Jessica Holland was one of those volunteers. It was uh, an incredible experience to volunteer for the soap project. So the SOAP project has been going to Super Bowls for over a decade, and they have distributed over 2 million bars of soap across the country with the human trafficking hotline on it. The SOAP project succeeds on a basic idea. If people see something, they will say something. So they distribute flyers with missing children's pictures and hand out soap and makeup remover with the number of the human trafficking hotline on it. They hand it out to hotels and motels. If a missing kid, a passerby, or a hotel employee recognizes someone, they can easily and discreetly find the life-saving phone number. It's similar to what advocates in Las Vegas already do, training staff to recognize signs of trafficking and placing the hotline number in bathrooms everywhere from hotels to the airport. 
mean, it could be a Lyft driver, it could be a taxi cab driver, certainly hotels and really the infrastructure, right, around tourism and, and big events needs to be called attention to this, you know, incredible issues. Of course, big events like the Super Bowl put a lot of attention on human trafficking. Holling, herself a survivor, is quick to point out the buying and selling of people happens every day. Our logo, what happens here, stays here. It doesn't stay here for, uh, you know, it doesn't go away for us who have been bought and sold here, and it's happening right before our eyes. John Trainer, News 3.